So, when last we caught up, I had the forge working, and now the forge is not working. I'm doing it on purpose, I'm actually pulling it apart, uh, which is the great thing about the way I put it together in the first place, that I had all these bolts that I could take, put in and out. <laughs> um, but basically what I've decided to do is actually put a tabletop in, just somewhere where I can ha uh, have extra coke or, uh, or charcoal or things, just maybe some tools, just a little bit of bench space that I can move things on and off the forge with. So, I probably should have filmed this whole thing, but uh, I got enthusiastic and just got started, and then here we are at this point in the process, with a still a little way to go before I'm gonna get to where I am. But let me take you through what I've done. So I've got a you know, maybe 1.6 mil piece of steel plate. Um, I've, I've cut it to the size to fit into this recess here. Um, there was nothing for it to sit on and I still haven't welded on, but I've got um, some angle iron here and on the other side, which I'm gonna be welding in and it's gonna be creating like a platform that this, this table's sitting on. So currently you can see I've got the, uh, got the clamps holding that all together. Um, I've cut a hole or I've little, literally just finished cutting a hole in, um, in the plate and uh, that's been interesting. So, as you know, I'm an absolute novice at this stuff and this is all about me making mistakes. I'm sure that there's a nice way to actually get all this square uh, and get the, the hole in this exactly where it needs to be. But basically what I've done is a lot of measuring, a lot of rechecking, um, a lot of approximation, but hopefully you know, within a couple of mils of where I need things to be. And what I did was I started by trying to get the center of, of this table, but also the center of the, the flow pipe or the, um, the upflow pipe where the air comes through to the drum. So, so it goes through there. So I'm trying to get the middle basically in here. <laughs> and I've drilled a hole right through the center. And then from there, I've decided, all right, that's the middle. So. Whether this works or not, I'm gonna go with that. And if it doesn't work, I'm just gonna to have to do it again. So I literally do not know yet if this is gonna work, but I'll tell you how I went about it. So the next thing that I did was, where is it? I got a punch, I got a piece of cardboard, <laughs> and I got a pencil, um, and I, Put my punch through here to create a hole. Uh, I then measured up halfway of the um, the, uh, the the circle, the um, the diameter. So halfway of that, no diameter goes around the radius. One of those diameter or radius. <laughs> tell me in the comments below which it is. But basically, I measured from here to at the outside of the circle. Um, uh, circumference goes around. Yeah. So that's what that is. So I've got two holes. I put a pencil through one. I put the punch through the other. I got my punch into the center and I traced around a circle like so to actually draw the circle line. Then I have got the angle grinder and I've literally freehanded as carefully as I can all the way around the circle. And what I've done is I actually come in a little bit because I wanted to make sure I had enough room for error. So if I do need to move it, I can move it to the left or right or, or backwards or forward just a little bit by using um, a, a grinder just to, to move it where I need to go. So what else did I do? Oh, um, because the center wasn't really supported by anything, as I was cutting, it started to close in on itself. So I've stuck a piece of board under there um, and board. It's really a piece of timber, it's thicker than board, uh, to hold the center bit so that uh, it's not all falling out and that's worked pretty well, so I was happy with that. So now, uh, I've also got to see if this is gonna come out. Uh, yep, yeah, yeah, that's good, sharp edges. I should probably be wearing gloves, but uh, that looks like that's worked. So that's the piece of steel. Put that there. And, um, I don't know if you can see this, but I've actually cut right through here because that was over here to start and I cut through onto the wood and moved it back. I don't know if that's the right thing to do or not, 
let me know if that normally catches fire um, because I certainly smelt like it was cooking a little bit there for a second. So that's where we are. So the next thing I've got to do is see if this drum uh, forge piece is going to fit in here. I'm going to take all this stuff off. Just put it over here for now. Excuse me. in the center uh, which I think you can see there's off center but that's because I've moved things around a bit so that can actually go left or right that's no problem it's the back and forth that I was worried about because I don't have any back and forth to move on because I've got a bolt that goes down through here that uh, is really holding the the forge in place so I can go left and right but not really back and forth so let's get the drum It's a bit tight. It's pretty much in the right, is it in the right spot. It looks like I could probably go that way slightly. So because it's a bit tight, I'll grind a little bit off this side so it's not actually pushing the table down. And I think that's actually going to work pretty well. So that goes that way. I, I can move the thing back and forth too. So let's I'll try and move this first before I go deciding. my grinding blade on and, uh, and then I'll come back. All right, so I've got my, didn't put a grinding wheel on, I put a flapper wheel on actually. Um, I'm a little concerned about, I actually don't need to go back very far. So I'm just gonna do a quick uh, clean up around the, the circle and then um, I, I will cut back into the circle just a little bit toward the front. Put my glasses on. It's actually a little bit late at night, so we'll see what the neighbors think of this. Hopefully I'm not going to be doing it for too long. So. going to say that that's cleaned up uh, get the grinding wheel this time <laughs> and then just really quickly just cut that little piece out all right so you know I'm impatient um, I'm out of grinding wheels um, thanks to my brand new anvil I've ground down every single disc that I've got um, so what am I gonna do I'm still gonna do this tonight I'm gonna use um, a bigger cutting wheel that I've actually got because I'm not really using them anymore I'm using a lot thinner cutting wheel for this sort of work so I'll use a big fat one I'll just be really really gentle and um, let's see if we can uh, just knock enough it's only a few mils that I need to knock off this thing So the back's right, the back's in the right spot. The front actually looks like I need uh, probably a fair bit more than I, than I originally thought off the front. Yeah, it's all off the front. Right through to there. So it's literally just this part of the front here. Getting closer. Now the one thing I've got to be careful with using the cutting disc is it keeps trying to gouge into the into the middle. So um, just try and do it with a light touch. Oops. 
<laughs> you know what? what I'm going to actually pick this up tomorrow. Um, so all I've got to do is, is, is cut a little bit more out of here. I really don't want to wake the neighbours' kids up, so let's try and be uh, let's try and be polite. <laughs> um, I've got uh, all the bolts and screws I'll use to push back in. Um, uh, what I could do, uh, what I what I can do is I can actually weld. Uh, these pieces on here, that's not going to be too loud, so um, uh, I might, I'll, I'll do that part now. Alright, so I've got the welding equipment ready, I've taken the plate out of the top just to make it easier and uh, I'm going to turn it on its side so I can actually weld underneath it, it'll make it uh, easier on me. Uh, this is a centre column and I'm not sure if you've actually seen it in this capacity, but um, basically there's our bolts where we've actually got our inflow valve. Uh, here is the trap door that we created to let any of the slag out. I'm currently just using this magnet, uh, this square magnet, uh, which actually is very cool because if you touch the top it actually holds it open, which is a nice way of, uh, of using it. Only problem is with my magnets <laughs> and all my magnets that I've got and I've been collecting, uh, little metal filings are sticking to every single one of them. So if you've got any tips for that, let me know. Um, anyway, that's the that's the basic core of the forge, and then obviously the drum piece sits on top. So I'll move that out of the way. I'm pretty happy with how solid that is. Uh, all right, so gloves on. Um, last time I was doing welding, <laughs> I was welding on. Uh, that plate, that solid plate. So um, I had turned this machine right up, so I'll just have to turn that right down and um, turn this on its side and um, be ready to go. Obviously I have a handy wire brush so I can uh, clean up a little bit of this stuff. Before. Seem to be on there all right. So I knocked off the slag, uh, used the wire brush to clean it up a little bit, and the tacks on the outside have certainly uh, held, but um, I think I need to fill in the gaps more, um, and I'll, I'll do that now just to make sure I get a more solid weld, especially on the inside here, uh, especially because I'm going to grind it off on the outside too. So um, I'll, uh, I'll get that one done next. Now you're going to see me with a new stick or even a cold one uh, that I warm it up by going back and forth on the metal and I actually leave a bit of crap on there. I would like to know if there's a better way to warm up the, the end of the stick. If there is, let me know because I find doing that makes the whole thing so much easier. So if there's a better way, if there's a cleaner way, let me know um, and we'll go from there. You can always change things. This is a learning experience. One of the other things I find myself doing is actually breathing the fumes in. Uh, when you're welding, when you're welding close up to something, uh, how do you avoid that? I've found my, uh, if, I, if I do a lot of this, obviously this is just a little bit, but if I end up doing a lot, uh, I get a little lightheaded or, uh, or sometimes I get a headache. Hmm. So what do you do to avoid the welding fumes? Let me know. Fumes. Pretty good. Take the clamps off. Uh, well, that's good. Plastic clamp working with metal. Melted the front of that. That's smart.
You're gonna need a little wire brush to get into these corners. Made a mess of this one, so I'll, I'll put a new one in. Anyone who's been watching this channel long, uh, for, for very long knows that uh, this is not about me showing you how to do things necessarily. This is about me showing you how not to do things often and uh, basically the, all the different things that I'm learning, the mistakes that I'm making that hopefully other novice blacksmiths and uh, welders in this case can learn from. So best practice here you'll not find but a will to learn and the ability to break stuff down and try again if it breaks is something that I'm all up for. So we'll, uh, basically I'm having a lot of fun. Done. <coughs> so those pieces are on there. As you can see, they create a shelf um, for the plate metal to sit into, so we can create the table. I'll put that back in. that in for now. Tomorrow I'll come back, I'll grind off this area here and then we could, should be good to just bolt it all together again. Then we can get back to uh, get back to blacksmithing. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you've got comments about any of the ridiculous things I've been doing or any of the questions I've got, please leave it in the comments below. Um, uh, as I said, I'm really enjoying this. Um, I'm enjoying the comments that I'm getting on the other videos, so thanks for that. And uh, thank you again for watching. I'll, uh, I'll see you.